This is Snickers. It's our last rescue. Um, my wife actually rescued him from in South Central at a school that she was working at. And so like she kept seeing him for like three days and on the third day she hung out with him for an hour and but she fell in love with him so he became our seventh dog. Uh, my name is Andrew Jaimez. I'm a musician here in Los Angeles, and I have a recording studio of uh, the compound where we're at right now. Ninth birthday, I got a drum set. My first band was my family. Uh, everybody in my family played. My dad, my brother. What I've learned is, is apparently there's a lot of engineers that want to produce everything that they're engineering. And I've never been that person. I like to stay in the back, try to get the cleanest signal I can get. Uh, and this. I just use for inputs. Yeah. So I have 16 in on my. But a lot of times, um, the artists ask what I think, or what we, what am I feeling? All right, you guys want to play one more time and, and secure the level? I'm getting the levels together and I'll we'll start tracking. I just really like it. It really feels like you're a member of the band because once you lock that mix in right and the energy connects, you're almost like you know it's pretty powerful. I really enjoy seeing the musicians, the artists track, and then when they come in there and they hear it back and it has compression and EQ and reverb, and, and they're like, oh, you know, I mean, that's, that's very fulfilling for me. You know? um, I'm from Kansas. When I moved out here about 25 years ago, oh, 27 years ago, um, I started playing with the local musicians or the guys around here, and a lot of them had their own recording studios. I lived in Studio City for a long time, and um, to get a place to play was way out of my range financially. It's like impossible. A guy named Jonathan Rodriguez, a buddy of mine, saw me playing. And he goes, hey man, I got, a, I got a spot in East LA. You want to come by and check it out? So I, I came by, and it was this building and the building next door. And he and some other guys were using, this, using it for the rehearsal hall. And, uh, you know, hang out and drink beer, rehearsal hall. It was a hellhole. Yeah, it was a party joint. It was a pretty awesome hellhole for a long time, but uh, yeah. You know, I'm thinking, wow, these rooms for the price is crazy, you know? So uh, little by little, one guy dropped off, another guy dropped off, another guy dropped, and then before you know it, I had the whole, I had the two buildings. It was put into my head that this was a, a dangerous place that I don't want to have my car break down in. So that's, that's what was given to me about how this, how East LA was. So I, I don't know if I can speak for all of East LA, but for this area, for sure. Because this area used to be bad. So there's liquor stores, you know, a lot of them. And here, especially, there, there's, there's, you could throw a rock and hit a liquor store around here. It's unfortunate, but it becomes the norm um, because there are so many people who drink around here. Speaking from my experience, you know, I use that to, to escape life, life on, life on life's terms, you know. I, I use that to, to dull myself and not have to deal with life. I could just be drunk. When I would go to the liquor store at 8 in the morning, I'd see the same guys there every time. You know, it's like, okay, we're starting our day and this is, this is gonna be our day. And this will be our day tomorrow and this will be our day after that. And it really, I feel it's a way of, of keeping these, these areas dull and, and not able to, you know, reach their full potential. It's like everybody can draw around here, everybody can sing, everybody can play guitar. Um, a whole lot of art. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of really good families that, that look out for each other around here. Um, the taco shop next door in Mecca, when I first moved here, I was building a studio, so all my money was going there, you know, so I, wasn't, I didn't have a whole lot of cash on me. So I would eat at the taco shop for three or four days at a time without paying sometimes, and she would just run the tab. Then when I had enough money, I'd, I'd go in and pay, you know? And that kind of stuff was just, it really made me feel a part of something you know, as opposed to just a place where I lived. I mean, now, fortunately, it's, it's, it's a lot cleaner. 
just good things happening. But uh, back in the mid '90s, it was it was pretty ugly. I mean, there'd be so many people selling drugs in the alley. When I would get my drugs, I would I'd make the phone call, and within five or ten minutes, there'd be somebody at my back gate, and there's a little hole there, you know, where the chain goes in. Within five or ten minutes, they'd I'd hear the honk, I'd run out there, and they'd just hand me the drugs through the, through the hole. <laughs> yeah. Right here. yeah, right here, man. You know, and it was, it was everywhere. I mean, you'd walk down the alley, and there'd be multiple dealers, and the cops would come down the alley, whatever, and then as soon as the cop made the right turn out of the alley, everybody's back doing what they were doing. It was, that was my worst, and uh, at, that, at that time, uh, I wasn't married, but it, it, my girlfriend then is my wife now. And she would, uh, she would go through uh, all kinds of crap with me. But she would, she would get home from work and drive with me to the gigs to make sure I could get home safe. Um, she would try to keep me from drinking. I mean, she went through the whole thing with me and, and uh, came up with things to help me stop drinking. I went to my first AA meeting. My wife took me. I remember sitting in the van and I was either going to punch the windshield or start crying. You know, those are my choices. So I punched the steering wheel a couple times. Then I just had to start crying because it was too much. I quit drugs and alcohol in 2005. Um, the really cool thing is when I did stop using and stop drinking, all the guys that I would used to drink and, and do drugs with, they all supported me in it, you know, because really they all didn't want, they didn't want to do that stuff either. You know, they don't want to be drunk all day. They don't want to be high. They don't want to spend their money on it. They don't want to be alienated from their family. Uh, but they were caught in that trap. And um, it felt genuine. And, and that really helped because I couldn't leave this environment. You know, I had to keep working. I had to stay here. But between that and, the, and my wife, she's observed. She observes a lot. And she sees me. She really does. She, she knows me better than I know myself. You know, she can call things out. That's your pattern. I'm like, ah. And I'm like, oh, it is my pattern, you know? And then slowly everything changed. Um, so my wife was a huge part of that, as well as music. You know, I mean, I, I, music has always been there for me. It's always been my foundation. Um, the funny thing is, though, is I got very insecure uh, with the music. And that's, that was a strange place. After I was sober for two years, that's when we got married. That's when we had adopted our first dog, Charlie, from the uh, Downey shelter. Alcoholics and were selfish. To give to another, we don't do that, it's all about us. And so the dog, he completely needed me for everything, you know, and, and so something, something happened there. And, you know, we became dog people and we really love our dogs. Our dogs are like our kids. And so every time we see a dog on the street, all of a sudden I'm like, I, I need to do something. I can't leave him there. And, um, so we started rescuing and fostering. I'm, bl I'm very lucky that my wife understands that and knows that that's something I have to do. It's the way I can give back. So yeah, so moving forward, I just, I wanna be a, a better husband, a better father to my, to my dogs, uh, a better person to the community, and, and the way I do that is helping with the animals. And, and the homeless when I can. And, uh, you know, I definitely I, I want to be a better musician and, and a better engineer and, and be able to have better product because that's going to allow me to make more money so I can be stronger in all the other areas as well.